Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Today is July 4th, 2024, and we take care of over 100 animals here, not including our reptiles. So including the snakes that we have here, we have close to probably about 200 animals, and that includes horses, dogs, cats, of course the snakes. And over the years, we have taken care of many, many other species of animals that include pigs, goats, sheep, exotic mammals, other livestock, and birds. And it's super important to not just know how to properly feed the animals and care for the animals' behavioral needs, but also how to make sure that we are affecting proper hygiene for these animals and the areas in which these animals live and play and do their training activities. So we're gonna go over in this webinar what cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing are, what's the difference, and I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about what um, sterilizing is, although that's probably not something that you're going to do in your home or maybe in your animal rescue or sanctuary. Let's just start out with some common terms that you're going to see as we talk about what cleaners are, disinfectants are, etc. One, we're going to talk about what pathogens pathogens are, and pathogens are disease-causing agents. It could be anything that living things come into contact with that can cause disease, and that can include bacteria, a virus, a fungus, a protist, which is a little tiny single-celled organism, a helminth, which are types of worms, or prions, which are abnormally folded proteins, Germs. Germs are disease-causing microorganisms, and those are typically bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. Cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilization are all different processes that serve distinct purposes in maintaining hygiene and preventing the spread of pathogens. So basically, we always talk about cleaning things and keeping things clean, but cleaning has its own specific definition that is different from sanitizing and disinfecting, so let's discuss what that is. Cleaning is simply removing dirt and debris from something. So cleaning's purpose is to remove dirt, dust, impurities, and debris from surfaces. So I could clean something with a brush. I want you to imagine food that is on a plate or dirt that is on the outside of a bucket or on the bottom of your shoe. Um, cleaning is just getting that dirt off. So you could use a brush to do that. You could use your hands to scrub that dirt off. You could add water to the process, which usually makes cleaning simpler, or you could add a cleaner to it, which sometimes helps break up that dirt and debris a little bit easier. So the process involves physically scrubbing and using soap or detergent, usually along with water, to physically remove contaminants from a surface. And it reduces the number of germs on a surface, but it doesn't necessarily kill them. So what it does, let's say there's bacteria on a surface and you're scrubbing it. You're gonna remove that bacteria from the surface, but it's just gonna go somewhere else. Maybe it falls into the, onto the ground or into the sink. It's not necessarily gonna kill the bacteria, it's just gonna get them off that surface. But cleaning is very important because if we don't clean surfaces first, it makes it more difficult to disinfect them. And disinfectants don't normally work if there is dirt and debris on a surface. Let's talk about sanitizing before we get into disinfecting. Sanitizing is kind of in between cleaning and disinfecting. Its purpose is to reduce the number of germs on a surface or on objects to a safe level, and that is judged by public health standards. So it's cleaning or disinfecting, usually a combination of both, using chemicals designed to reduce the number of pathogens to what are determined to be safe levels. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to kill all of them, and it doesn't mean that something is sterile. It just means there's a low enough number of germs or pathogens on a surface that it's unlikely to cause you to get sick. So when we talk about effectiveness, there's a lower level of germ removal than disinfecting, but it is typically more effective than cleaning alone in reducing the pathogens on something. So that's why I said this is like a step in between cleaning and disinfecting. Think of hand sanitizer. You're not in a position where you can find soap and water and scrub and wash your hands, 
or where you can properly disinfect them with something. So you just use alcohol-based hand sanitizer and you rub that into your hands. Now let's discuss disinfecting. The purpose of disinfecting is specifically to kill germs on surfaces or objects. So that those are um, substances which are gonna kill the bacteria or the viruses, for example. And this process involves using some kind of chemical that's meant for this, like bleach solutions, hydrogen peroxide or hydrogen peroxide-based products, or alcohol and alcohol-based products, just to name a few examples. And it's used to actually destroy all the pathogens, like it kills the bacteria or kills the viruses. And it's effective at killing pathogens, but it doesn't clean dirty surfaces. It can't remove debris or germs from surfaces. That's why it's so important to clean surfaces first and then disinfect. So I want you to think about it like this. If the food is covered, if the plate is covered in food, and you pour a disinfectant on it, it's going to disinfect the surfaces where the food's not caked on, but it isn't going to dissolve that food and make the, the old food go away. Or if there's dirt on the bottom of your shoe and you pour disinfectant on it or you step in a disinfectant um, foot bath, it's not going to be able to kill any pathogens that are underneath that dirt or in that dirt. The dirt has to be removed first by cleaning you know, scrubbing with your hands or with soap and water or a brush. So the dirt and debris have to be removed off of surfaces first. Then you can disinfect them. So you've got a clean surface and then any germs or pathogens that are left on there that are microscopic that we can't see are going to be killed by the disinfectant. Now let's talk about sterilizing. Sterilization or sterilizing of instruments or tools is not something that you're typically going to do at home or maybe at your animal rescue or your animal sanctuary or your horse barn or your dog kennel or your reptile room. Sterilizing is something that you're typically gonna see in veterinary hospitals, human hospitals, laboratories. Its purpose is to completely eliminate all forms of microbial life, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and spores, like from mold spores. So anything that's alive that can cause disease is going to be killed by this process of sterilizing. And it's using physical or chemical methods to destroy all microorganisms. And it's highly effective it is the highest level of microbial control and it ensures that there's nothing alive, no living organisms remain on whatever is treated to this process. If you look at this picture, this is a Kent scientific microbead sterilizer. There are a whole bunch of tiny glass beads inside of this instrument and inside of this mechanical um, machine. And you stick the instrument in there, so your surgical instrument, for example, and the machine heats the glass beads up to 300 degrees Celsius or 572 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything that comes into contact with those beads is considered sterilized. It's a sterile instrument. So other methods of sterilizing you may be more familiar with. This is a relatively newer method. So let's take a look at some of those. Other sterilization methods include autoclaving. This is really common in ver veterinary hospitals and I'm sure in human hospitals as well. And it's commonly used to sterilize surgical instruments. So if you are gonna have surgery, if your snake or your dog or cat or other animals gonna have surgery, you wanna use instruments that have first been cleaned so there's no debris left on them. And then you wanna put them in this autoclave where it heats up to a very, very high temperature and also uses steam to sterilize the instruments. And then dry heat, and that uses high temperatures for extended periods to kill microorganisms. Chemical sterilants, and this is using chemicals such as ethylene oxide gas, hydrogen peroxide, gas plasma, or liquid chemicals specifically designed for sterilization. And then radiation. So ionizing radiation can be used like gamma rays to sterilize medical devices and other items. But I, the most common type of sterilization method I came into contact when I worked at a veterinary hospital was autoclaves. And again, that's using steam under pressure and at very high temperatures to sterilize equipment and other supplies. 
So let me summarize some terms that I've used and that we've talked about. Cleaner is a substance or substances used to remove dirt, grime, and impurities from surfaces. Usually in conjunction with a cleaner, you're going to have to scrub with your hands or spray water on something or use a brush because the cleaner alone is not going to remove dirt and debris from a surface. It just helps. Like a degreaser, for example, helps you clean a greasy surface because it does actually help break apart the grease. Sanitizers are agents that reduce bacteria on surfaces to levels considered safe by public health standards. Disinfectants are chemicals that kill or deactivate pathogens, including bacteria and viruses that might be on surfaces. And then we didn't talk about this specifically, but if something is labeled a viricide, um, it's an agent specifically formulated to inactivate or destroy viruses and just viruses. And then a sterilant is a substance that destroys all forms of microbial life, including spores on surfaces and equipment. So let's compare these processes. And we're going to talk about cleaning and disinfecting because these are the two most common ones that you are likely to do at home or in your dog kennel, your animal sanctuary, your barn, your reptile room. This is very common, cleaning and disinfecting, and they need to be done together. You've got to clean something first, and that means removing all the dirt and debris, and it reduces the number of germs, but it doesn't necessarily kill them. And then once you have a clean surface, you can disinfect that surface. Disinfecting means that you are killing many germs, um, lots of microorganisms, but it doesn't achieve the complete elimination of all microbial life. And then the two that you're less likely to probably use are sanitizing and sterilizing, although they are complete opposites of each other. So sanitizing is better than cleaning, but not as good as disinfecting. It's reducing the number of germs to a safe level, but it's not as rigorous as disinfecting. It's like your, your hand sanitizers, for example. And then sterilizing on the other end of the spectrum eliminates all forms of microbial life, including mold resistant spores. It's essential for medical and laboratory equipment that must be free of any microbial pathogens. And it is meant to prevent infection or contamination of a living thing like a human or an animal that's undergoing surgery or whose body's being cut into with these instruments. And then let's review, and I want to thank Envirex for this great graphic that I found. And so I want to give them credit. I pulled this off of Google Images, but it's from this company in Virox. And it just is a really good illustration of the difference between cleaners, sanitizers, disinfectants, viricides, and sterilants. So remember, a cleaner aids in soil removal. A sanitizer is going to reduce the number of bacteria. A disinfectant is going to actually kill fungi, bacteria, and viruses. A viricide is going to kill just viruses, but it is specifically formulated to inactivate viruses. And that can include enveloped viruses and non-enveloped viruses. And if you're interested in learning more about the different types of viruses and why some things are effective at killing them and some aren't, um, we could do a whole nother class about that. Just let me know. And then sterilants are those things that eliminate all microorganisms, all fungi, bacteria, viruses, and spores. It completely kills them so that that instrument is now considered sterile and you could use it to perform surgery. Here's a list of resources if you want to do a deeper dive into any or all of these topics. As always, please remember to be kind and love your animals. And if you have any questions for me or you have a topic that you want to request that I do a webinar on, you can reach me through my website at behavioreducation.org or consider becoming a Patreon at www.patreon.com slash behavioreducation. And you can also reach me through Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Their website is spiritkeeperanimalsanctuary.org. Thank you for learning with me today. And everyone, stay safe. And I'll remind you one more time to always be kind and love your animals and make sure that you practice good hygiene so they stay healthy.